Hello and welcome to today's episode of Medicinal Monday, healing from head to toe or altering your health from head to toe on the Alter Your Health podcast. I'm Dr. Susanna Alter. And I'm Dr. Ben. And we're both naturopathic doctors who support individuals in reversing disease and reclaiming optimal health through whole food plant-based nutrition and mind-body medicine. So we're working our way throughout the body. Of course, uh, last week we started at the top of your head or at the outside of your body, you might say. Um, it's talking about the hair. And I guess the next step is like, where does the hair come from? Where it, well, it grows on the skin. So today we're talking about the skin and specifically creating radiant and clear skin, talking about some common skin conditions such as acne and eczema and dry skin, and just suboptimal sluggish skin, maybe. Um, and of course, what we can do about it. And really naturally, you know, the, the whole purpose and intention is to support us in understanding really the, the physiology and nature and connections within our body so that we're more empowered and connected with kind of the common sense choices and behaviors that support us in living our healthiest life. Definitely. Yes. Yes. So let's first start by talking just a little bit about some of the most common skin afflictions that people experience. Um, maybe it's acne, maybe it's eczema, maybe it's psoriasis, maybe it's rosacea. Yeah. And it, I mean, I mean, just right off the bat, you know, I think about all these skin conditions and um, I know that you were getting at the fact that like so many of them have common roots, even though mm -hmm. they have different expressions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that it's common to just the, the mindset mindset of relating with our skin. It's like, oh, it's just this superficial topical thing. Um, so I just need some superficial topical treatment or ointment or band-aid, <laughs> like, you know, to, to, you know, to just manage the symptom. And of course, those kind of things can be really helpful in managing the symptoms. Uh, but really creating the radiance and the clarity uh, happens as a natural consequence of creating harmony and balance of our internal terrain. Definitely. So that, that's kind of a hopefully a theme that really we embrace throughout our conversation today. Right, right. Because, you know, let's just talk about kind of the more kind of band-aid approach to skin issues. You know, there, there's all these kinds of sayings like, well, if it's wet, then dry it. If the skin is dry, then wet it. Or, you know, looking at kind of pharmaceutical interventions, often if it's an inflammatory skin condition, we use anti-inflammatory steroids, right? Yeah. If it's some kind of infection, then there's some kind of antibiotic or antifungal ointment. But there's always a deeper root cause. And that's what we're going to talk about today. 100%. And um, of course, we're not suggesting that if there are any acute sort of infections that we just like, oh, consider what the deeper root cause is and neglect treating ourselves. But from my experience, and I do have personal experience, a handful of it um, with acute infections, I treated it and managed it, you know, in, in ways that were appropriate. But also I stayed open and curious to what was leading to that vulnerability, that susceptibility that led to, in my case, chronic recurrent uh, skin infections. And then, of course, addressing the, the terrain, addressing my immune system, addressing inflammation and stress and all of these things leads to more resilience. Um, so that's that's kind of something that we're not going to talk about, like the skin infections, but mm -hmm. uh, acne and eczema and rosacea and psoriasis are kind of the most common chronic skin and skin conditions. And then there, there's, of course, just like dry skin and aging um, that people are always wanting to uh, mm -hmm. slow down or reverse or and prevent. Skin. Exactly. And then, of course, we'll just touch on skin cancer as well, because that's yeah. a big one. But yeah, starting off with these chronic common conditions that are really inflammatory in nature, uh, where are they coming from? And, and remember, we're referring to eczema, psoriasis, acne, rosacea. Um, and many of these conditions, although they are unique conditions, they do stem from very similar kind of underlying imbalances. And one of the first major imbalances to consider is a person's gut health yeah. because 
when we have dysbiosis in the gut, that leads not only to local inflammation in the gut, but that'll stem, that inflammation stems systemically and leads to an imbalance in the immune system that can then lead to these inflammatory symptoms on the surface of our skin. Right. Um, so the gut immune skin connection is very clear. Um, and a lot of people, of course, have chronic digestive issues, maybe not even digestive symptoms, but dysbiosis that is reflecting through other inflammatory conditions, whether or in, inflammatory symptoms, whether it's joint pain or headaches or brain fog or skin flares and outbreaks, or maybe some migratory combination of all of the above. Mm -hmm. um, right. So yeah. there's, there's that. And then there's the, the detoxification liver health component, which is really huge. Of course, we know that the skin is the largest organ of the human body. Um, on average, you know, everyone's obviously a very different size, but an average adult, like I was looking at my size of my, my body surface area, and it's about 20 square feet of skin covering my body. That's a good amount. That's like 20 square feet. That's like a good amount. It's a big organ. It's a big organ. And um, that surface area is always, of course, taking stuff in, you know, if we're put, rubbing stuff on our skin and like moisturizers and soaps and potions and ointments and stuff and sunscreens and what other, whatever other chemicals are being absorbed through the skin. But ideally, our skin is also excreting stuff. Of course, we're sweating, which is healthy and normal and a good thing that we should be doing every single day. Um, and in doing so, we're excreting toxicity. And if our liver isn't really helping us out and breaking down efficiently these, uh, these products to be excreted through the skin, they can build up behind the skin and cause these uh, inflammatory skin conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting, actually. If you look into some of the science, um, there definitely is correlations between non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, for example, and some of these chronic skin conditions. Yeah. Um, so we, we want to focus on liver health. We want to focus on sweating. And of course, as we'll be talking about, we want to focus on not, not putting stuff on the skin that that exacerbates things, even though a lot of times we're being sold stuff that's like, oh, it's, you know, good cleanser, this or that. But other th those kind of things can do more harm than good, and especially in the longer term. Definitely. Yes. Another contributing factor to chronic skin conditions can be a disrupted ecosystem on the actual skin. So if there's an imbalance in the microbiome on the skin, if there is an imbalance uh, in the pH mantle, meaning, you know, that the skin is too alkaline, it's not acidic enough, uh, that can lead to all sorts of issues, overgrowth of uh, bacteria that leads to certain things like acne, just for an example. And when we're really regularly cleansing, exfoliating, what we can do is really strip away our skin's natural barriers and leave it more prone to drying out and infection and just all those other kind of imbalances as well. Yeah, again, kind of very counterintuitive in today's culture. We're told that we need to scrub ourselves and wash ourselves like multiple times per day. But in doing so, we create a little bit more like we disrupt that ecosystem through all the chemicals and, and things that alkalinize the skin. And I think a lot of people have confusion because the inside of our body, generally speaking, should be on the alkaline side of things. In terms of our topical ecosystem, our skin pH uh, should be maintained in, on more of an acidic level. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, that, that chronic disruption leads to a vulnerability, susceptibility to you know, the, the imbalance, the dysbiosis on our, on our skin that, of course, you know, we talk about dysbi dysbiosis in the, you know, digestive system, but the same thing can happen on our skin, which leads to more susceptibility of, again, the inflammatory skin conditions. And I guess all of them, but I think mainly the acne. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But then another contributing factor, of course, could be hormonal issues. And we see this, you know, maybe you experienced this when you went through puberty and all the shifts in hormones. Of course, it affects the skin. Uh, but later on in life, 
Also, if we have a sluggish liver and our liver isn't able to properly metabolize and detoxify hormones that can, you know, come back around, uh, you know, and kind of we can have that haunting from the past, these skin issues reemerge. But also when we're thinking about hormonal impacts, we need to think about the nervous system as well, because one of the biggest hormones that can affect skin health is actually cortisol. Cortisol yeah. will affect all other hormone levels in the skin. Um, but when that when your body's under a state of chronic stress, um, your skin is definitely one of the organs that'll show it. Or acute stress. I know that, you know, uh, it doesn't happen so much anymore, but when I would be kind of stressed about a test or about a relationship or whatever, you know, it's like, yeah, get a little outbreak. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a pretty common occurrence. But when you're talking about hormones, I'm so glad that you brought it back to liver health the point before, because hormones aren't the issue. You know, it's like, oh, hormones, it's like got to manage my hormones. Our hormones manage themselves with a healthy liver. I should say a, a healthy liver helps to manage our hormones. And a balanced nervous system. And a balanced nervous system. Mm -hmm. um, so really hormones kind of can exacerbate things. But, you know, of, co of course, it's a healthy liver that's not too burdened with exogenous toxicity and it has enough hydration and nourishment that's able to keep all those hormones in balance naturally. Right. We don't need to like, I guess what I'm trying to say is we don't need to micromanage our hormones. Right. But, you know, I just want to take a pause and go, you know, take a step back and, and acknowledge like, Wow, there are a lot of factors playing into skin health, right? And this is just, you know, to to show you how interconnected the body is, right? Yeah, we can't just isolate the skin. Then we could go on and on about all the other like, nuanced connections. Oh, but just, right. Just to recap here, things to consider are our digestive health, our gut health, our microbiome, and that 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 the step beyond that is uh, the the health and regulation of our immune system right because that's really where our immune system lives is right beneath the digestive lining and our gut health has a huge uh, role in our immune activity and then there's our liver health our uh, body's ability to process and excrete toxicity that we're taking in and uh, then there's the ecosystem of the skin kind of the topical environment and then, of course, the hormones that can kind of play in and exacerbate things. Right. We could add also the nervous system in, in that list as well. And, you know, all of these things that we just mentioned, they make up what's called the terrain of the body, um, essentially the overall ecosystem in the body. And um, so the terrain is probably a term that we, we might be saying over the course of the next few weeks in Alter Your Health we from Head to Toe. Time, yeah. We say it all the time. Um, but we really encourage people to relate to their body and their health as this ecosystem and terrain. And there's all these different components that play into a healthy and balanced ecosystem in the body or terrain in the body. Yeah. And if I think about just the ecosystem or terrain in nature, of course, it can like, you know, I'm not a natural e e ecologist or anything like that. Uh, but it reminds me of we were just having hearing that person talk to us last night about bees and about how like there's all different ways to like micromanage an ecosystem from this kind of top down approach. Or we can just look at it from a bigger picture perspective and create and allow the natural harmony and balance to be created by taking away the forces and the obstacles that are getting in the way, which is oftentimes, you know, really the approach and philosophy that we're taking. It's not like, how can we fix things? It's like, what is getting in the way of things naturally fixing themselves? Because that's what our bodies do is they create and maintain our ecosystem and terrain naturally. We, we're generally not lacking anything. That's not to say that nutritional deficiencies and, and such might exist, but more often than not, it's the toxicities, it's the obstacles that are, you know, in excess that we need to be mindful of when we're living and breathing and eating and sleeping and moving and all of the uh, basic things that we're doing around the clock. Definitely. Yeah. But what about something that affects everyone at some point in life, which is aging, aging of skin. And we get questions about this a lot. Mm. And I think it's really helpful for people to understand that skin aging um, is caused by the breakdown of DNA in the skin cells. And it is a natural part of just 
living on the planet. But it's also important to realize that skin cancer is also the result of the breakdown of DNA in the skin cells. And so when we eat a diet that is high in antioxidants, there's actually a lot of evidence showing that both supplementing with antioxidants, but mainly what's most important is just maintaining a diet with high levels of antioxidants helps to prevent these processes of aging and, and cancer formation in the skin. Yeah. So of course, antioxidants, huge buzzword. And, um, a lot of people equate antioxidant to something that you swallow in a capsule, but we like to always, of course, remind people that antioxidants are fundamentally found in whole plant foods, uh, you know, vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients. And for sure, there's other there's antioxidative compounds that are found in animal products and, and whatnot. But the most nutrient dense, antioxidant rich foods on the planet are plants. Uh, you know, of course, things like darkly pigmented berries and green leafy vegetables and and all that and the, the carotenoids and the oranges, you know, oranges and mangoes and carrots and sweet potatoes and just all the colors right mm -hmm. when we're thinking about antioxidants we should be considering eating the rainbow and that whole notion definitely yeah. definitely so on this topic you know preventing wrinkles and aging and skin cancer you know people might think about well what about sun protection um and really you know we, we're big proponents of going outside and spending time in nature and not yeah. being afraid of the sun. Oh, now, yeah. at the same time, if you have fair skin, you don't want to get sunburned. You don't want to have that direct DNA damage. And the best way you can really protect yourself from that damage uh, is to maintain a good antioxidant status. And then if you know that you do burn, to use a very clean, natural, mineral-based sunscreen. But what's really interesting is you might find that as you increase your antioxidant status, and there are even supplements that can help people do this, you have a, you have a small or a less, lesser tendency to burn as quickly in the sun. Totally. Um, and, uh, you know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of sunscreens in general. I, you know, of course, the, the best thing that we can do is kind of just like, you know, if it's if it's coming into summertime, and obviously, we're in the middle of summer. So, but, but I think about kind of like training the body, you know, like going out for, for 10 minutes and then maybe like 15 minutes and, and kind of just increasing our uh, exposure to the sun over time, kind of building a little bit of base tan, even though a lot of people don't tan, that, that still increases our resilience, especially when we have kind of this, um, this uh, antioxidant reservoir to tap into that kind of offsets potential DNA damage. But the, uh, the benefits of sun exposure, from my understanding, far exceed the risks of sun exposure. And that's not to say that we should just let ourselves bake all day, every day. Um, but, you know, healthy, you know, just common sense. Right. But yeah. no matter what your skin tone, increasing the antioxidant status is going to be so helpful in slowing that aging process and also preventing the process of cancer formation in the skin. Right. So, and then I, I realized that we didn't even bring up the topic of hydration yet and like dry skin. Is that? Well, no? yeah, okay, I was, sorry. I was going to kind of bring that in at the end when we talk about the overall basic lifestyle interventions cool. we can do. Okay, cool. But yeah. yeah, when we're talking about the aging conversation, a big thing that comes into the conversation is things like uh, collagen, uh, you know, and a lot of people are being sold like collagen supplements. And oh, aging is collagen breakdown. We want to offset that by eating collagen. And um, we make our own collagen. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body. And of course, vitamin C is an essential ingredient for bio but for the biosynthesis of collagen in your body so if anything we should be quote unquote supplementing with vitamin c to allow ourselves to make more collagen but of course we can get all of the vitamin c that we need from vitamin c rich whole foods uh, we really like amla kind of supplement amla berry supple in a quote unquote supplement form like powder as well as acerola cherry and camu camu berry and these sort of things that are really, of course, not only vitamin C rich, but antioxidant rich, all the other bioflavonoids. And they support us in creating that collagen that keeps our skin plump and hydrated and resilient.
Definitely. Yeah. Some other terms that come into uh, the skin aging conversation include hyaluronic acid, uh, which is a compound that really helps the skin stay plump and moisturized. And um, specifically for women, as they move through menopause, they start producing less hyaluronic acid because estrogen is a really key hormone um, that stimulates hyaluronic acid production in the body. But there are also some other foods that you can focus on, focus on to increase your body's innate hyaluronic acid production, including vitamin C rich foods, which do boost hyaluronic hyaluronic acid as well as collagen, um, but also focusing on zinc rich foods because zinc deficiency is connected with uh, lower production levels of hyaluronic acid. And then soy. And this is really interesting because soy contains isoflavones, which is a class of phytoestrogens that can actually help to- Let's call them phytonutrients that are estrogen modulating. Yeah. Because a lot of people get thrown off. Like a lot of people such as you know, boys, men who like are like estrogen. Scare, yeah, scare, scared of uh, soy. Yeah. But yes, so phytonutrients that are estrogen modulating, which means they help to balance estrogen levels and effects in the body. And so especially for women who have gone through menopause, having a little bit of soy can really help that production of uh, hyaluronic acid and improve your skin elasticity. Cool. Uh, so just a few little fun food based tips there. Yeah. But yeah, let's let's move on to talking about just kind of our overall overarching basic skin kind of lifestyle things that we can do. Of course. And it all starts with food and nutrition and what we're choosing to put in our bodies and whole food plant-based all the way because of course our whole food our whole plant foods are nutrient dense and also low in toxicity uh, they've got those phytonutrients and antioxidants that support us in combating uh, you know the free radicals from sun exposure supporting our liver in uh, doing what it does naturally, supporting our microbiome through all the fiber, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the, the immune system balancing. Everything kind of hinges upon whole food, plant-based, nutrient-dense nutrition. Um, yeah. Also, you know, we started the conversation by talking about the main causes and con contributors to these inflammatory skin conditions. Well, whole food plant-based eating really helps to uh, resolve those underlying issues. For example, gut imbalances. I just said that. Oh, you did? Yeah, I said, you know, the fiber, the, uh, the immune okay. system, the nutrients, the liver. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, sorry. I, it wasn't, I guess I uh, was thinking, I don't know. But I want to say it again more okay. directly, that whole food plant-based eating, and we will touch on this as we get lower lower from head to toe, but whole food plant-based eating is so amazing in rebalancing gut health and also so supportive for liver health long-term. Um, so yes. Yeah. And on that note, just a quick tangent on the non-whole plant foods that can exacerbate skin issues big time. Mm. Uh, dairy is kind of at the top of the list mm -hmm. because dairy floods our system with exogenous hormones that throw our gut microbiome out of balance, throw our liver health out of balance, throw our immune system out of balance, throw our hormones out of balance. And that for these reasons and more, um, dairy can be a, a big contributor to a lot of these chronic skin conditions. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So one of our favorite food based practices is to start the day with a daily green juice. And this is extremely cleansing for the liver, uh, which translates very well to helping to heal skin conditions. So that's yeah. one one little tip that we yeah. love. In addition to like a green juice or other sources of mineral rich hydration that keep the liver and detoxification pathways moving, the lymphatic system moving, the circulatory system moving, all of these things are a, a, a incredibly important for resolving and maintaining a healthy skin, resolving skin conditions and maintaining healthy skin. Definitely. Yeah. And then the, the specific nutrients, which I really don't like talking about too much. We did talk about vitamin C, you brought up zinc. Collagen, of course, comes from vitamin C, eating vitamin C, but you know, other antioxidants and minerals like zinc and selenium and vitamin A or the carotenoids, uh, vitamin E. Um, you know, the reason why I don't like talking about them is because they're naturally built into all of our whole plant foods that we're eating. Um, but some of them might be considered, to, you know, in supplement form. I would think zinc 
-hmm. more than any. Um, Zinc is an essential mineral for cellular regeneration. And by the way, our skin regenerates. We have an entirely new epidermis every month or so. So in order to promote that healthy regenerative potential, we need a sufficient amount of zinc. And of course, we get plenty from our whole plant foods, primarily our nuts and seeds and legumes and such. Uh, but being in a little bit of a zinc surplus can really help the process as well. Yeah, or correcting zinc deficiencies, rather, I would say. Yeah, and of course, zinc plays other roles, such as immune regulation and balance and so much more. So Yes. Yeah. So then moving on to this important piece that, of course, we could talk about for weeks and months and years, which is uh, maintaining a balanced nervous system so that there is not that overproduction of cortisol uh, in the bloodstream. Because remember, cortisol will affect other hormones in the body, leading to hormonal imbalances, but it can also directly impact your skin, as we were talking about. Yeah. And one of my favorite things to do every single day is uh, the next thing, which is uh, hydrotherapy and specifically a cold shower. And uh, you maybe have heard of us talk about, you know, how awesome cold showers are. Maybe you've heard other people talking about cold plunges or cold showers. And of course, they have so many incredible benefits to all of our all aspects of our health. But in terms of our skin, really, the cold closes our pores to retain the moisture in the in our in our body in our in our skin and also uh the the cold exposure drives our circulation in a healthy direction um so cold exposure and balances our nervous system the list goes on and on in terms of the benefits but a lot of people end their showers with hot you know just get out of the hot shower dry off with a towel and they're pouring out moisture and they're losing uh, moisture. So you might find that after a hot shower, you've got like dry skin and you need to re-moisturize. Um, whereas after a cold shower, you feel like, oh, you know, my skin's nice and plump and moist. And that's at least my feeling because I do take hot showers and or hot baths from time to time. And I get out and I'm like, oh man, I need some moisturizer. Definitely. And yeah. And that, that, leads, that and leads on that note. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, we've had this whole conversation. We haven't even talked about moisturizers or anything topically. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That leads to the next point, which is when we're talking about skincare and topical applications, less is more. And we mentioned this in last week's episode, talking about hair, that it's really most beneficial if whatever you're putting on your body, you could actually also eat. That means it's not going to be toxic, right? Um, but why do we say less is more? It goes back to creating that balanced ecosystem on the skin, right? And, and you know, so many moisturizers, cleansers, things like this that people are constantly slathering on their skin actually shifts the skin's pH to a more alkaline state than is really ideal. And in that alkaline environment, there can be an overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria that leads to things like acne or can make people yeah. more susceptible to um, infections and inflammatory stuff. And it can break up that natural skin barrier to actually make it more easily easy for that uh, natural moisture in our skin to evaporate, yeah. leading to that dry skin. So yeah, less is more. And there's this whole approach <laughs> called the caveman method that Susanna introduced me to like six or seven years ago, which is essentially putting nothing on your skin and allowing your pH, pH mantle to recalibrate. And it's a process. Uh, but then all you do is put, you know, water on your skin. And of course, you use soap on other parts of your body that are dirty or stinky or whatever. But in terms of the skin, you, it maintains itself which I think is just incredibly liberating, even for a dude who doesn't, hasn't ever really relied on skincare products. I do know the whole world that exists and how many dollars are spent on topical skincare regimes, which we didn't even really harp on the fact too much that so many of these are filled with chemicals that exacerbate the issue. And of course, maybe they make us feel good and like they you know, alleviate symptoms for some period of they time. They have pretty packaging. They pack pretty packaging. <laughs> uh, but the real beauty, the real radiance is coming from within always, yes. always. Yes. Um, so less is more. Tap into and unleash your 
inner radiance uh, by just living aligned with nature. Right. Yes. Yeah, so as we're wrapping up, we'll be back on Wednesday for our Wisdom Wednesday. We'll, we'll, we'll be talking about the mind-body aspect of skin health. Uh, but until then, if you're looking for more resources, more support, head over to www dot alter dot health where you can learn more about our thrive on plants program or other services where we support individuals and groups in reclaiming their health naturally through lifestyle medicine all right you guys peace and love have a beautiful day bye